Welcome back to Crazy Gamers Games, and this is part 14 of my quest to build an Adeptus Mechanicus army for the very first time for Warhammer 40k. In the last video we went over um, my Breacher Destroyers, and I was going to try to magnetize them to get both Breachers and Destroyers. That proved to be more difficult than I anticipated. So I built destroyers, but they are still magnetized. They can switch between the flamer. Zoom in here. They can switch between the the flamer. I believe this is a phosphor serpentina or melt gun. And I left this sticking out like the post that would originally be there. And then I magnetized the plasma and the grav. The green stuff is still trying on setting my magnets. I had to pack the inside of this with green stuff and embed a magnet in there. Because I was going to put a piece of sprue as like a substructure. But this proved to be way easier. I spent more time on trying to magnetize these than than was necessary. It took me about three days and part of part of today. So plus we had Christmas so I didn't really work too much on those on these guys. But that is the update on my breach or my destroyers. The other six I have are gonna be all breachers. I don't think I'm going to make any more destroyers. I'm not a big fan of them. I'm a big fan of the heavy arc rifle and the arc crawl for that damage against vehicles. So, that's that. But what's next on the table? Zoom back out. It is an Adeptus Mechanicus Iron Strider. Let's take a look at what the Iron Strider can do. And now you can build this two different ways as a Dragoon and a Iron Strider Bullet Bellastari. I, I've seen videos that you can do both builds with this with magnets and that's what I'm gonna do. These are fast attack units. Uh, the Dragoon is a combat unit it's got um, mainly only good with the Taser Lance. And then the Ballastari has either Twin Cognus Auto Cannons or Laz Cannons. The, the Dragoon has a movement of 10, 3 plus weapon, 3 plus ballistic, 5 strength, 6 toughness, 6 wounds, 3 attacks, 8 leadership, and a 4 plus save. It, the unit can contain one Dragoon or up to five additional Dragoons. And each model is equipped with a Taser Lance and a broad spectrum data tether. And then any model can replace its Taser Lance with a Radium Giselle. And any model can take a Phosphor Serpentino. So the Phosphor Serpentino, 18 Assault 1, Strength 5, negative 1 AP, 1 damage. You as attacked by this weapon do not gain any bonus to saving throws for being in cover. The Radium Giselle is a 30 inch range, heavy 2, strength 5, 1 damage. This weapon may target a character even if it isn't the closest enemy. Each time you make a wrong roll of 6 plus for this weapon, it inflicts <coughs> excuse me, a mortal wound in addition to its da normal damage. So, you can do an extra wound if you roll 6, but the Taser Lance is better. It's a melee weapon, plus 3 strength, so that'd be 8. Negative 1 AP, 2 damage. Each roll of a 6 plus with this weapon causes 3 hits rather than 1. It benefits from the canticles of the Omnissiah. All models in this unit have a 6 plus invulnerable save. It has the broad spectrum data tether. Uh, friendly Forge units within 3 inches of any friendly model equipped with a broad spectrum data at the start of the morale phase. Phase adds one leadership for the duration of the phase. 
Um, it explodes. You roll d6. Each unit within three inches suffers one mortal wound. And this is nice. It has an instant cloud. Your opponent must subtract one from all hit rolls for ranged weapons that target this unit. That's good. While you're trying to get them in, you can. They're harder to hit to be taken down by gunfire. Now the Iron Strider has a movement of 10, weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 3, 5 strength, 6 toughness, 6 wounds, 2 attack, 8 leadership, 4 plus save. Each unit can contain 1 up to one unit or up to 6, and it becomes equipped with twin Cognos auto cannons and a broad spectrum data tether. The auto cannons are 48, heavy 4, strength 7, negative 1 AP, damage 2. Two, you may fire this weapon even if the firing model advanced, but you must subtract two from any hit roll if you do so. And then you have the LAS cannons. Everybody knows the LAS cannons are fantastic. Heavy, uh, 48 heavy inch, heavy two, nine strength, which is very good, negative three AP and D6 damage. And the same as before, you can fire this weapon even if the model moved. Subtract two from any hit rolls if you do so. It benefits Chronicles of the Omnissiah, Bionic 6 plus and Volume Save. Data Tether is the same, and the Explosion is the same. So that is the Fast Attack. I, I, I like to refer to them as Chicken Walkers. But my son likes the chicken walker thing. So that's basically, um, it's going to be referred to as a chicken walker a lot. So let's see what we have in the box. I bet you there's transfers in the box. Ooh, we got a nice base. Let's see what size base this is. It is it's like a hundred and five millimeter. Let's see, it's oval, so let's see what it is. It's like seventy. Seventy oval. I believe one of my bases from the Sector Imperialis set that are, you know, textured bases. I think there will be one that we can use in place of this. There's the transfer sheet. Stock it up on these. So there it is. You can build this, the Dragoon or the Iron Strider. Looks like a pretty simple build. I'll let you know if I have any problems. Looks like you follow 1 through 7 for the Dragoon and 1 through 3 for the Ballastardi and then you go to 8 to 10. So it looks like 1 and 2 and 3 is your legs and your cockpit area. Even with your little um, servitor driver. And then it starts with the Dragoon. I have cross-referenced these books on magnetizing both of them by doing his arms for either the weapons and also you can, on this part right here, you can magnetize these to this front part and you can swap the barrels in and out or take the whole unit off his body to use the taser lance and make him a Dragoon. So that's basically the only difference is this this setup where the where the weapon mounts go with the weapons and his arms you just magnetize both the arms and they pop off and then you can go back to being a dragoon. So I look forward to tackling that. I'm always a big fan of trying to figure out how to magnetize these the best way possible. And you can pick different heads, they're probably gonna be have the ranger head, they look like they're all ranger heads. And then we got the. Let's take a look at the paint scheme on this guy. So this is Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and some Rhinox Hide. 
So I'm I'm mixing it up between all my base codes between Mephisto Red and Corn Red. Um, I believe all my bigger vehicle units are gonna have a corn red base and all all my smaller infantry and elite troops are gonna have um, the Mephisto Red as a base color of the red. Let's take a look at this sprue here. Oh, right away I see that it's definitely the Taser Lance. Let me zoom in a little bit. So we got, I'm assuming that's the rifle, the Radium Giselle. It's one of the weapons. This is part of the of the main body. You see the guy's already in there, so you don't have to put him in there. This is the Servitor. Pieces of a coot there. Must be part of. Yeah, there's the body of the Skatari that's driving it. There's his backpack. There's his back. And it looks like these are part of his his cloak that he clicks on to. That's that. Let's check out this last sprue. Looks like we have some more guns. I believe these are the auto cannons. And the last cannons were the last sprue. There's the legs right there. The legs aren't that long. They are basically... Seventy millimeters tall. So overall he's not a he's not a huge unit, but he's gonna be bigger than you know all the Skatari and whatnot. I'm not sure what all these all these little pieces here are. I noticed that a lot of these bigger models they have a lot of little pieces than the smaller models. They can be a little tricky to clean up the mold lines and get a hold of. I recommend having some tweezers and some um, locking forceps. The tweezers I like to use are squeezed to open. So you can just grab the part and you can let go of the tweezers. Especially if you're cutting something out. You, you can just hold it gently and then you can cut it out. And then the tweezers will pull it real nice and easy. Um, I still have regular tweezers because they're useful too. So that's basically the Iron Strider or Dragoon and that's what's going next on the project table I hope you're enjoying the series if you have any questions on more stuff you want to see or you know if you want me to go in depth on any more things just leave a comment down below if you like what you see hit the like button if you want to see the whole series there's 13 videos up. This will be number 14. Um, you know, subscribe to my channel and you'll get notified when videos post. At least um, one a week will be posted for a while, and sometimes multiple ones a week. Uh, for a while, I've been doing two, three, four a week, just you know, unboxing and building one of each unit, and then as I start building the same unit over again, I'll just We'll go over just a couple of them at a time instead of each one individually. But that's that's this. Thank you for watching and thank you for joining me on this quest for Crazy Gamer Games. I'm the Crazy Gamer. Have a great day.